So from the last video, we have our list that actually tracks an underlying array. We can add items to our list and simply put the item in the list or in the underlying array. And if the array gets too small, we'll simply resize our array. That's from the previous video. So we added all these people, their ages, of people that came to our party. I want to bring this for each back into the picture. If I uncomment the for each, you'll see that we get the red squigglies and Let's hover over that. For each statement cannot operate on variables of type me list because me list does not contain a public definition for get enumerator. Okay, for each was introduced to C sharp in the very first iteration, C sharp 1.0. What the compiler does is converts a for each to essentially a get enumerator, enumerator move next. For each is one of the first forms of hardcore syntactic sugar that the C-sharp language introduced. Let me show you what the C-sharp compiler does. It says iEnumerator. In this case, we're operating on ints, so ints. iEnumerator of ints, I'll call them Rater, gets my party, ages2 dot, get enumerator, enumerator, while Rater dot move next. And then whatever is in our loop here is what will be pasted down in here. So console write line rater dot current. And that's essentially what the C sharp compiler does with a for each. It translates a for each to this. Now what is this I enumerator thing and what's this git enumerator? This actually goes to prior to C sharp and uh, other languages have the concept of iteration long before C sharp did. But the idea is if you have a sequence, and in this case we do have a sequence, we have a sequence of four items, even though the underlying array may store more than four. Out here in main, all we're worried about is hey, we put four items in there. There's a 25, there's a 34, a 32, and a 36. And when I get an enumerator, an enumerator is essentially an object that references a sentinel value out here that doesn't actually exist. And if I want to look at the first value in my sequence, I must say move next first. And if move next returns true, that means there's an item to look at. And move next will return true until there are no more items to look at. Let me demonstrate before we actually code up our own enumerator. Let's come in here and change this to the built-in list that .NET provides. You'll notice all the red squigglies go away, and I'm going to comment out our for each. I'll F10 here. Let's step down to enumerator Raider gets my party ages to get enumerator. Right now, Raider is referencing the sentinel value. It doesn't exist. Raider.move next. That will return true because there is an item here, and the current item is 25. And so let me actually update our enumerator. When I say move next, our enumerator is now referencing the 25. F10, F10. When we say move next again, F10, that will move Rater down the line to the 34. And you can see here that Rater.current is 34. Good to go. We can print that. Move next. Move next will return true because there is another item to look at in the sequence, and that is the 32. The current item is 32. Good to go. Move next to the next one. That'll be a 36. Current item is 36. And we're good to go. Now move next. In this case, there's not another item to look at. So move next will return false, and we are out of our loop. So an enumerator is simply an object that allows you to trace through another sequence. You can have more than one enumerator on a sequence at a time. Let's Let's actually do that just to prove it. Let's do, this will be Billy, and we'll do Bobby. Okay, we have two enumerators into our sequence. As soon as we retrieve both of them, actually, I just realized that Billy and Bobby are going to be bad names, because B and B, Billy will reference here, let's do Johnny. We'll do Johnny, and Johnny will also reference the sentinel value. And then down here, we can mess with these all we want to. I can say billy.move next. In fact, I can say billy.move next three times, and maybe in here we'll say johnny.move next, uh, maybe just one time. But when we do cw uh, billy, billy.current, and cw johnny.current, what will print to the console when I do this? Pause the video and think about it before continuing. Okay, F10, 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 get Billy and Johnny, Billy and Johnny, referencing the sentinel value, Billy.move next, we'll move 
Billy up to the 25. So Billy's now referencing the 25. Oh, Johnny dot move next. Well, that's going to change Johnny as well. So Johnny will reference the 25 too. Billy dot move next to move Billy up to the 34. Hopefully this isn't rocket science. And then uh, Billy dot move next again will move Billy up to the 32. Like so. So now I have two enumerators allowing me to trace this sequence. And the enumerators don't necessarily have to be on the same object. You can see Billy.current is 32. Billy is referencing 32. And Johnny.current is 25. Johnny is referencing the 25. Now if we call for current when our enumerator is in an invalid state, then we'll actually get some errors. For example, let me come down here. I think we're done with Johnny. We can get rid of Johnny. And let's... That's right here. We'll say CW Billy dot current. Well, Billy, as soon as we retrieve Billy, here's Billy. Billy is referencing the sentinel value. Billy doesn't have a current. F10, 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 F10. Billy dot current is zero. If I F10 on that, I get zero. It's invalid. It's considered invalid or programmer error to call for current when we have not called move next. Likewise, if we call move next too many times, let's just move next well out of our sequence. F10, 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 F10. We're moving next, moving next. We call for current. Current is zero. So zero, this could be bad on our part because zero is a valid integer value. All right, so we, we need to be intelligent. Now, rarely do I see anybody writing code like this. I enumerator, give me a numerator. 99% of the time, actually 100% of the time, well, maybe 99% of the time. I'm calling functions that do this for me. For example, all the link functions, they rely heavily on get enumerator and that sort of thing. And so I'm not calling get enumerator explicitly. I'm relying on the syntactic sugar of C sharp with the for each. When we say for each, C sharp actually converts that for each to all that code I just deleted. And we don't need to deal with it. Now, I want to make our list enumerator. So let's change this back to me list and me list. I think we're done with the drawing. You see we get the red squigglies down here saying for each cannot operate on variables of type me list int because it not contain a public definition for get numerator. Well, we can make a get numerator. I'll say I enumerator of int get enumerator. That needs to be public as well. Public get numerator. And I will actually rely on yield in here. I'm going to say for int i, i less than count. We know that count stores the actual number of items that have been added to our sequence. And then in here, I'll just say yield return count. Not count, I don't want to yield return count. I want to yield return items sub i. Now, I have several videos on yield return. Go watch those. There's a lot of syntactic magic that came into C Sharp. I think 2.0 with yield return. Why are we getting the red squiggly? Oh, oh this is a T. Duh. I enumerator of T. Okay, well that's, that's right, I can store anything, not just ints. Anyway, go watch my yield return videos if you want to learn more about yield return. I'll control the 5 here, and look at that! Our for each works. There's no longer red squigglies in here, and we were able to iterate our sequence of 25, 34, 32, and 36. Even though the underlying array is 5 large, uh, the way we wrote our loop here, we only give back the items that the user who actually added items is interested in.